Welcome to Ministry Funnels Day 5, the final day. I'm excited and I'm glad that you're here. Thanks for sticking through all the five days. I hope this has been value added for you. No matter what stage you're at in regards to starting a ministry or having a ministry, I pray that there has been some great resources for you to grow your ministry and to connect you with things that you may not have known existed before. So for day five, we're going to talk about the profit strategy. So this is an exciting day for me to talk about this. And it might be something that you might be uh, put off by initially by saying, well, you know, I'm in ministry. I don't want to make a profit. And so we need to clarify some things as far as what that means to make a profit. Now, there's a lot of ministries that might be nonprofits. You might have an organization or church that's nonprofit. And basically what that means is not that they can't make money, but they just have to divest it, reinvest it, I mean, into the ministry instead of making a profit. So you can absolutely do that. I'm not a 501c3. But whether you are or not, it's okay to make a profit and make money based on what you're doing. Now, I will say, so here's the disclaimer, is that you should not go into ministry to make money. It sounds very, very, uh, uh, should be very obvious to not do that. If you are starting a ministry by saying, oh, there's money in it, I want to start that. Don't. <laughs> Stop what you're doing right now and do not go further in this or your ministry because you're not doing it for the right reasons. No one should start a ministry for the money. First of all, the money's not that great in most ministries. And second of all, and most importantly, God should be calling you to start a ministry. He should be giving you something to say and a message to say that you're not doing for the credit or even for the money for it. That's not why I started Discerning Dad. That's not why I'm doing what I'm doing. Now, is it wrong to get some money to get support, just like a pastor takes a salary? That's not wrong. So it's not wrong to make money and get supported by doing what you're doing by people that want to come alongside you and give you that money. So we're going to talk about how, how to do it, how to do it wisely, and also how to do it with a mindset of people that are in business doing stuff like this really well under the context of doing it in ministry. So the question really is to profit or not to profit. If that's what you say, I don't want to do any of these strategies and not make any money. I'm set financially. God has blessed me. Great. My heart is really to help you be successful in ministry. And also, like I said in day one, to, to help pastors who are maybe smaller pastors with 50 to 100 people, right? God, I love you. You're doing amazing for the kingdom. But at the same time, I don't want to, you to be in a position where you have to work a second job or that you worry about your future of your family or that you don't have anything saved up for retirement. Okay. These are things that are real for pastors. My dad was a small, small church pastor. Okay. So I know some of these things come up. And I, I want to be able to help you connect you with things that are getting you in the right direction for where you want to go. You may not want to focus on any of this within the first few months or first year of your ministry, and that's okay too. But you may also not realize that a lot of these things are easy to do and can be incorporated into what you may already be doing. That's the exciting part of this. It's not that you're going to be asking for money every day, or that you're going to have all these crazy links everywhere, or that you're going to be, you know, one of those people that we hate to see that wants to finance their private jet. Okay, we're not we're not talking about any of that. But also, you want to look at ministries take time. They do. They take a lot of time. And you know, I was in the business world for many many years before a full time ministry, and so I know my value in the business world is how much I would make an hour. And uh, that's not how much I make by doing uh, ministry, right? I don't get the value for my time back. And that's okay. I'm not saying that I should. You know, I don't even make $15 an hour in ministry. I spend a lot of hours just podcasting alone, not to get the benefit of it. But once again, I did not start a ministry to get money. I started it because God gave me a message of discernment that I'm spreading to other Christians to help them make godly you know, decisions that honor God. And so I'll gladly do that for, uh, you know, God has blessed me in other ways. So I'm not looking just for ministry in order to make money. Now you're going to be in different phases, different stages of ministry, and that's okay too. Um, but I would, like I said in day one, go before God. What is he calling you to do? 
what are some goals you can set for yourself and also what strategies that you're going to hear today can you start to incorporate into your ministry to help you make some money to cover costs because now, when I first started, there was minimal costs. You know, I had the cost for a website, cost for, uh, you know, uh, editing software, cost for different things. And once I started podcasting, there's more costs. Once I started writing a book, there's even more costs. And so uh, even if your goal is just to break even on costs, that's that's fine, too, uh, to make something back, to, 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 to not just be a burden um, on your finances, but actually to, to make some money off of it. And, you know, take book writing, for example, you know, I did not, I wrote a book because God put the message on my heart very clearly. And I wrote the book in three to six months, a very short time for writing, considering I never have written much after college. And so I did it based on this, this, this desire to, to be faithful to the call God gave me not to make money off of my book. And actually what I found out in uh, the, the, the business of writing books is that very few authors actually make money very few there's a good chunk of money to get uh, involved which we talked about on the previous day about finding a publisher or self-publishing but there's a good chunk of money to get involved and there's some steep steep uh margins they take off of you especially on amazon it's ridiculous it's like four dollar profit for a 15 dollar book on average right that's ridiculous you think like oh if i sell 100 books i'm gonna make 1500 bucks no you're not you're really not and so, uh, you know, you don't, I, I even talked to a major publisher who said that they, uh, you know, you should not write a book to make money because many don't. He, he confirmed that. And I said, well, good, because that's not why I write books or I have written a book. I'm writing another book too. Uh, and so when you go in knowing that, also knowing that if I do sell books, it's just going to help a little bit, you know, make some money back from what I did. Now, granted, there's people out there that sell millions of books, right? Uh, and that's an option. It's kind of like, you know, how many people play sports compared to how many people actually make it into the professional leagues. You know, that's going to be pretty rare. So you don't want to just say, oh, yeah, it'd be cool to write a book because I get to make millions of dollars. Uh, yeah, not so much. You don't want to you don't want that to be your goal. Um, so just like with writing a book, starting your ministry should not be to make profit. However, it's also not bad if you do make some money to uh, make up for that. So. Hopefully that's clear. We're going to go through this a little more. Um, really, the difference between making profit for supplemental income versus full-time income. Uh, once again, you know, there's there's options for both. If if your ministry can become a full-time thing and you're able to quit your uh, nine-to-five job, uh, you know, whatever that is, then then why not? Why not? If that's what God is calling you to do, and that, and that's the timing He set up for you. Uh, to be able to do that, then, then why not? If you're able to focus full-time on ministry, why not? And also it could be a supplemental income like we talked about. Mine was, uh, I worked full-time for many years in business world while I was doing this uh, ministry and it became very hard to kind of do it well, even though I found time to do it and I had to put a lot of boundaries in place so that I didn't jeopardize my family, my time with God, that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, we talked about the costs of your ministry, which are, um, you know, grow over time, the more that you get involved in. And you want to make sure that you offer something unique. So if you if you ask for money, if you are putting a product out there, if you're selling a book or anything, you want to make sure that it is something unique. We talked about this when you write a book. You know, you don't just want to be another one of the hundreds of thousands of marriage books out there. You want something unique. Bring something unique to the table that people have not heard before, which is something I thought I did when I talked about discernment is that I really wasn't hearing uh, that come from a lot of other people in that in that form. And so discernment was kind of an open open market for me uh, to kind of help people make better decisions. So that is something that I kind of researched ahead of time before getting involved. Now you can have a general ministry for sure. You can have, you know, a lot of people do ministries based on their name. So uh, mine would be Tim for our ministries, right? And I'll just, it could just be very general. I just talked about God. It might be, it might be marriage, it might be discipleship, it might be, uh, you know, whatever it is. Uh, that's a way you could take your ministry to. The name recognition really will not be something that you want to start with. Um, it might be something based on a theme. Uh, and we talked all that, about that in day one, but that's just something where, you know, bring something unique to the table where people, where people will want to support what you're doing. Um, if you create a t-shirt that is the same t-shirt everyone else is wearing, uh, why people, why will people want to buy it from you versus uh, another t-shirt company that's probably doing it better? So uh, with a lot of profit, uh, you let the internet work for you. And this is the cool part is that you can 
do some of the stuff you're already doing or planning on doing uh, with just some easy links, some easy ways for people to connect with what you're doing. And uh, you know, you don't even have to promote it very much if you don't want to. Uh, I have a support page on my website, discerning-dad.com. You can check that out uh, just for some ways that they can support me. One of the ways is to pray. Uh, because I believe in the power of prayer and I believe that prayer is an important way to support my ministry. Um, they can also uh, go to my store. They can also go to Patreon, which we'll talk about. Um, they can also support me directly from a link on the website. Literally type in the amount and, and through PayPal, they can send me money, right? I don't have a lot of people doing that, but it's just an option. I just like having an option. If people are like, why? Wow, I have money. I want to support you. Then I want to give them a way to do that. This is very similar to how churches do tithing, right? You you don't force it down people's throat. Um, you you allow time for it. You allow an avenue for people to give in person or online. And so uh, you want people to be convicted to give and not uh, browbeaten into it. So the same way when we're talking about making money, uh, you want to make it an option for people without that being the primary emphasis of your ministry. Uh, yeah, and there's no overnight success in doing this. There's no overnight success in ministry in general, and there's no overnight success in making a profit, right? This is something that will grow over time as people know more about you, as people start to be connected more in your ministry. And you have to stay up to date with strategies out there. The internet is constantly changing. The internet is constantly changing on uh, algorithms on social media. It's constantly changing on what's what's trendy, what's what what where people are going. Uh, even websites themselves are changing. People don't go to actual websites anymore. They go to more uh, funnels or they go to uh, a, a thing like Linktree where all your links are in one spot. You don't have to browse around on a, a website for, for minutes, which, you know, people's attention span is is measured in seconds now because of things like TikTok. And so you don't want them to just uh, lose interest in what you have to offer. You want to connect them with the right uh, area to go to quickly. Uh, and if your goal is not to make money, we talked about this, awesome, right? That should not be one of your primary goals anyway. So, but anyway, stay tuned to this 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 day of training because uh, there's gonna be some ways that I can connect you with things that are gonna still be uh, important for you to hear. All right, Patreon. Patreon is a website that helps uh, people support you. Uh, it is something that is for creators of content. So it could be artistic creators, it could be um, people who write, you know, authors, it could be uh, podcasters, uh, anybody really uh, can join this. And if you want to support them, you can and become a Patreon member. Uh, this is an awesome way of allowing people to support you uh, monthly. So this is like a monthly membership, but it also provides value to people that sign up for your content. Uh, you can have different tiers of support. So you might have a $2 tier, a $5, $10, a $50 tier, uh, depending on what you want to offer. You might only have one tier. Like if you want to be a Patreon member, it's three bucks a month. End of story. I try to promote it, promote Patreon where, you know, hey, for $2 a month, you can basically take me out to coffee, which or the $5 actually, because coffees are more five bucks now. But um, just a way to say like, hey, this really is not a lot every every uh, month. Um, and, you know, it's easy to play the math in your head where oh, I have 20,000 followers on Instagram. If everyone signs up for two dollars a month, I'm making forty thousand dollars a month. How cool is that? Eh, that doesn't work out that way. People are very hesitant to give any money, let alone a couple dollars a month. I do not have a lot of Patreons, Patreon supporters. However, the ones I do, I, I, d I definitely uh, value them and what they do uh, and, and how they provide uh, uh, support to me. And th the cool thing is that you're giving back, not just a way for them to give, but you're giving back exclusive things specific to Patreon. So it might be an exclusive podcast, it might be exclusive merchandise, it might be messaging. Uh, there's a lot of cool ways, which we'll I'll talk about here in a minute too. Uh, it's also free to start, so there's no cost to you to set up a Patreon account. So that's another reason why I'm like, well, why not? nothing happens out of it, then great. But at least it's free to start. Might as well have one, even if you only have five Patreon supporters, uh, maybe your mom, your sister, <laughs> your spouse. <laughs> so, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's something. It's, it's a way to start um, and it might grow from there. Now they do take it, they do take fees off of the back end after you already get money. So if you make 50 bucks a month, you might get 45 bucks based on taxes and all this other stuff. But that's also 45 bucks you didn't have before. So 
it's also uh, a good way to do it. Uh, you can create tiers of support with rewards. We talked about that. We're going to look at some examples here of how this works. Um, I'm going to include my Patreon in the uh, links below this training. Uh, not for you to sign up and support me unless you want to, but for you to see kind of how I organize it um, based on my specific ministry. Not that you have to do it exactly like that, but at least to see kind of uh, how I've done it. And I've edited it. Oh, edited it. <laughs> Sounds weird. I've uh, it's gone through some edits. Let's say that um, over the the years based on how I name my tiers and also the, the type of merchandise and uh, offers that I provide for my patrons. So exclusive messages, there's a messaging service inside the app. So you can actually message people. It goes to their email to tell them specific things, maybe write them specific messages or encouragement. Um, you can do an exclusive audio feed. So whether you want to do a second podcast, which is something I started I started a second podcast called Eyes on Jesus, which is specifically just for my Patreon supporters. It's not on any podcasting feeds that people can find. So that's something that uh, is an option too. Um, and just generally exclusive whatever you want to provide. So this might be uh, behind the scenes look at whatever. Uh, it's really open ended, which is what I like. Uh, one of the newer things that Patreon offers is branded content sent to your patrons at no cost to you, at least no upfront cost. So these are some cool items like a mug, a, a sticker, and a shirt, uh, maybe some more. But you can basically upload your logo uh, and they will slap that on this merchandise and send it out after they've become a Patreon supporter. I think for maybe three months or so, uh, they'll automatically uh, create it and ship it to the address of your Patreon supporter. How cool is that? I don't have to worry about it. So I have somebody that uh, I know who received like three items from this uh, and they, they promoted it on social media. Like, hey, look at this uh, mug I got from Discerning Dad. How cool is that? And so that's a cool way to do this as well. Now the cost comes in where, uh, you know, it might be a $10 mug. They take $10 out of your, uh, your take home money. So you do end up paying for it in, in, in that way, but I don't have to physically make the item, slap a label on it and ship it out. And so from a convenience factor, I love that. All right, this is also a way to get reoccurring support where sometimes, you know, people just give you 20 bucks, but the reoccurring support means that it is set monthly and you also kind of know what to expect. So if you have 20, 50, 100 patrons, Patreon supporters, uh, it tells you how much you make monthly. You might make 50 bucks, you might make 500 bucks monthly, and you can plan on that money as part of your budget, as part of investing in your ministry. And so that part's cool too, is that you actually know how much is coming in. Now that will change as people, people can also uh, unsubscribe from, from supporting you and you get an alert for that. So, you know, the good part about this for getting support is that people will tend to sign up and then uh, maybe forget about it or just not have to think about it, let's say. And so that that's cool where you can just get reoccurring support as opposed to someone who would have to, you know, give you five bucks every month by going to PayPal. Uh, they would not remember to do that. And you can set goals for yourself. So if you want to uh, have a certain number of Patreon supporters, you might say something like, you know, hey, we're at 45. We need to get to 50. The next five Patreons, Patreon supporters will receive a free whatever. Uh, personalized thank you for me or something like that. Um, you can put that out on social media for people to sign up, for people to get interested, like, oh, I want to be part of this movement. I want to be part of this community. Uh, I, I like the content. Um, I've signed up for people that I just felt guilty of uh, consuming their content without giving them money. Uh, I signed up for uh, a couple podcasts and I, I, I thought to myself, these are podcasts I listen to all the time. And over the course of a year, I might have consumed 50 plus hours of content. Uh, and that's, you know, how much is that per hour of these people's lives that uh, they're not getting any money from for me? I'm just I'm just consuming it for free. Um, so anyway, you might have that conviction about someone you uh, support or want to support. Uh, and someone might have that conviction about you if you're providing good content. This is an example of a Patreon page uh, that is uh, just showing you some generic tiers. Okay, so these are not specific to a person. 
This is Carlos Creator, uh, who makes film, music, and art. And there's a bronze, silver, and gold tier. Very, very simple way to lay this out. And you might get things like early access to things. Uh, maybe you're creating a, a, you know, a new song and someone gets access to it a, a week earlier. Uh, a tribe name sounds really cool. Fan to fan connection, an extra episode, group chats, polls, feedback, merch, collaborations, um, loyalty gifts, live streams, public shout out. Uh, so that's really cool. Uh, a, a bunch of ideas there, not just limited to these by any means. Uh, you might shout out your Patreon supporters on social media. Uh, sometimes I do that on my podcast too. I'll, I'll mention someone new that just signed up to give them a shout out too. Makes them feel good. Uh, once again, you can go to my Patreon page uh, in the link below to kind of see how I lay it out. Not the best example or the only example, but just an, an example, an example. So here's an option for you. Uh, this is something that's going to be, if you're more established in ministry, this is going to be something if you already offer merchandise, if you already have physical things to sell or to, for people to buy. So let's say you are a uh, selling Christian jewelry or you have a, uh, you know, an oil, <laughs> essential oils business, um, you know, things like that where you can actually have a full store online like an Amazon account. So this is like uh, an Amazon where you have a full store. They give you a landing page. They give you the entire setup to have your own store to send people to as opposed to just posting it. Uh, one item at a time on something like Amazon. This gives you an entire store for people to purchase your stuff. Now you're going to be responsible for shipping. You're going to be responsible for creating the items. This is just an e-commerce store to house your items to sell them. Okay, and this is a great option for you. Like I said, if you already have things that you want to sell. Uh, this is not going to be for everybody. Uh, if you want just like t-shirts, for example, I'll show you an option next that's actually going to be better than this. Uh, but this is something too that if you check out the links below, you can get an affiliate link to sign up for the Shopify store. Uh, if that's something you think you can take advantage of, it's there. All right, moving on to the next option, which is Spreadshirt. Uh, this is what I use. I love this. It's something super easy to create t-shirts or uh, there's a lot of different options too. Uh, basically how it works is you create your store for free and then you can upload a uh, design which you can get on fiverr.com. We talked about that on day one. You can put up a t-shirt design and then they just sl they slap it on a bunch of merchandise. It's, it's It sounds super simple and it kind of is. Uh, and then you create your store. You can create it where other people can see it. You have a, a specific link, a website to it. Uh, and it's all done for free, which is the best part about it. Uh, it's very easy to use. Someone like me who's not super tech friendly can just go through the steps very easily. You can edit a lot of things such as the colors you offer, the styles you offer, the prices of the items. And it's no cost because they take uh, a rather big chunk out of it, out of the price of the shirt, for example. So it might be a $15 cost shirt. You can charge 18 for it and then you make $3 a shirt, all right? Uh, once again, this is not to make a ton of money uh, necessarily. This is something to offer maybe your logo, maybe a specific theme. So I've, create, I've created multiple shirts, uh, one such as Bold as Lions. I did a blog post about uh, the verse in, in Proverbs, uh, how the righteous are as bold as a lion. And so I created a shirt that had a lion on it with the Bible verse on it in order to promote the blog and. Honestly, I thought it was a cool shirt, so I bought some. I wear them. I have multiple logos on my shirt site uh, that I have. <laughs> I think I'm my number one uh, per, uh, customer. So, you know, it's not that I'm making a ton of money or mo actually any money on this uh, for the most part, but I have it available for people in case they want to buy it. So I'm not really into T-shirts myself as far as creating designs. I think it's awesome if you're artistic and want to make Christ uh, Christian T-shirts or whatever. But that's not really my forte. That's not kind of what um, my ministry is about, but it's an option for you as well. Um, now, the, the previous option, Shopify, is a great option if you are if you know how to make cheap shirts. Uh, you can make cheap shirts for a cost of five bucks and then sell them for 15 bucks and you can see or 20 bucks and you can see the difference between the margins on those two are going to vary depending on um, the manufacturing and who you're using. You pay for a lot of that cost up front with the Spreadshirt, 
by having them do everything for you. So anyway, check it out. Uh, it doesn't hurt to at least have a Spreadshirt account, uh, especially if you have a podcast logo or something cool. You might have like three designs, four designs. It, it doesn't really matter how much you have, but you can make it available. And then you can put it on cool things too, like a, a mug. You know, just something as simple as a mug. I think there's a fanny pack, a pillow, things like that. I have a cool mug that says, it's like a loading screen. It says discernment loading, please wait, which I love because I'm drinking coffee. So I don't have a lot of discernment yet in the mornings. Um, anyway, I think that's fun. Something to do. All right. Affiliate marketing, if you don't know what that is, it's basically what we're talking about in, in some of these cases where you have a, uh, a specific link to something. Uh that you are sending people to a different site than yours in order to promote something or in order to get uh, a kickback uh, back from them. So for example, if there's a, uh, an influencer that is uh, signing people up for uh, a webinar, maybe it's a $99 webinar. I send people to that webinar. If they sign up through my link, I get 10 bucks for every hundred bucks, hundred dollar webinar they sign up for. Um, you can do affiliate links through a lot of different ways. We're going to talk about Amazon next. Amazon's a great way to do affiliate links, but it's basically setting up a specific website or a specific link for people to connect with your content. This is going to be something that you might want to create if you have a, a more mature ministry who's been around longer, uh, who wants to offer an affiliate option for people to uh, partner with you, uh, especially if you have like uh, clothing things like that, you're going to want to probably look into this where people can, uh, you know, other influencers online, uh, other people in ministry can can wear your stuff and then send people to your website to buy it. Now, you can do this straight up. You can send your shirts to multiple people and they can wear them and they can come to your site. But there's going to be more motivation for people that have specific uh, kickbacks in the form of percentages of sales or a set dollar amount every time that they send you people. So Tapfiliate is a website that you can set all this up. You can create links for people, you know, basically uh, uh, dummy proof for people like me who don't know how to do this. You can create affiliate links uh, just with the click of a bunk button for people to sign up and be affiliate partners with you. Uh, I did this. Uh, I partnered with a website called 316Ts.com. Great Christian T-shirt website. Check them out. Uh, they're not paying me to say this, but. They did pay for some advertising on my podcast, and what he did is um, he created a website, 316.com slash Tim, and people were able to save 10% um, based on going to that website and, and, and purchasing the, the products. So specific websites or specific uh, links that can help people connect with your product or you know partnering with other ministries as well. And that's one thing, one thing I hope to sidetrack that we can do in ministry funnels is create a good community that we can support each other's things. You know, it doesn't mean that uh, we don't necessarily need to get paid to do it, but it might be an option where, you know, you grow into an affiliate marketer, uh, have an affiliate marketing option and can reach out to people that you've connected with and say, Hey, would you mind promoting my stuff? It's uh, along the lines of what you're doing. And then be like, yeah, you know, or just to be able to connect in general is what I hope we can do with the ministry funnels uh, Facebook group. So back to Amazon, we talked about this a little bit, but what you do is you sign up, as long as you have an Amazon account, this is free, you sign up to be an Amazon affiliate. This is a win-win. There's really no reason not to do this that I can think of unless you hate Amazon, which some people do. But um, so when you sign up to be an affiliate, uh, a member, what you do is, you know, this is for tens of thousands of creators, publishers, bloggers who are earning money with Amazon Affiliate Associates program. Uh, you, you're able to share products to your audience that are relevant to your audience who, that people might buy anyway. And then based on the specific link you give them, when they go and sign up for that $15 book, you get a percentage back on it. You're going to make pennies on the dollar, but if you can send someone to buy a, you know, a computer, <laughs> bigger items too, you can end up making dollars on the thousand. So Earn up to 10% in commissions for qualifying purchases and programs. 10% is, I think, a scalable option. Starts off smaller than that. Um, so how I look at this for your ministry is if you're blogging, if you have a podcast, and if you have uh, podcast notes, uh, show notes, sorry, for your podcast, you can include links in there that are relevant to the topic. 
So if you are blogging about a book you read that you're recommending, let's say, for example, you're podcasting, you have Gary Chapman on your podcast, who wrote the five love languages, who I've had on my podcast. You can include in the show notes links to his books that are affiliate links to Amazon. So what that means is that when someone goes and buys the five love languages, not only does Gary Chapman get the sale for that item, but you get a percentage of that sale for everybody that goes and buys that item. So hopefully that makes sense. This is something that, like I said, doesn't have to be overt that you market to, market to people. Oh, I'm an Amazon affiliate, buy my stuff. It can just be a subtle thing that you include in the marketing that you're already doing. Uh, and funny story, I can actually have an affiliate link for my book, Everyday Discernment, which is on Amazon. And so when people buy my book through my affiliate link, I not only get the sale for that book, but I get a percentage back based on being affiliate. So it's kind of a double dip. That's a little insider tip for you. So another way we can look at uh, profit is by learning. So a lot of what you're doing is learning how to do these things, how to grow your ministry online. And one of the best ways that I've seen to uh, kind of garner some of the approach that people do in the business world, starting businesses, is to learn from them. Learn what they're doing, because from that, you can incorporate some things or all things into your ministry. One of the best ways is through Russell Bronson's books called the Expert Secrets books. He has dot-com secrets, expert secrets, and traffic secrets. Now, these are all, you know, these are uh, pretty thick books. They're, they're not, they're easy reads, though. You can read chapters at a time pretty easily. But it just goes over a general idea of internet traffic, marketing on social media, how to get people to come to see your content, uh, how to be, you know, have the best websites, how to utilize click funnels properly, which we'll talk about in a minute. But these books are important, I think, from base, from me reading them and also incorporating some of these strategies into uh, into your ministry. It is not necessary to have these. Uh, but like I said, as we're in the process of learning, uh, you want to treat your ministry kind of like a business on this on the fact that you have to do some of the same things that businesses do to be relevant online and to grow your presence online. And you can do that through these books. Now, these are free books. Now, granted, free and as a disclaimer where you have to pay for shipping. So, you know, it's as free in as much that you have to pay for, pay for shipping. But uh, there'll be links below too to get these books. There is another book that I want to tell you about called Copywriting Secrets. I mentioned this briefly in a previous day, but uh, this is by Jim Edwards who works closely with Russell Bronson. And uh, he specifically helps people copyright their, their, their material. Basically what that means is to Use the power of words to get more clicks, sales, and profit, no matter what, what you sell or who you sell to. So he will he will help you use your words in written and even verbal form to get the most people attention, get the most people's attention to your stuff. Now, I learned the hard way on some of this. The first few emails I sent, the first you know few posts I did were uh, boring. Okay, they just were. Uh, like, hey, friends, why don't you check this out? This is something new I'm working on. Would love your support. I don't know, just stuff, stuff like that. That's not how you grab people, right? You, you get emails all the time. You know what kind of grabs you, what kind of makes you want to open your email. And it's usually through uh, very specific copy, copyright material. Not copyright. It's few, <laughs> copywriting is a term used to, to write down uh, words to make it more appealing to people to, to find your content. So you're going to want to do this in your emails for sure if you plan on using emails you have to know how to set them up they can't be boring they have to be in the subject it has to be something that will get people to want to open them the click rates on emails are very very small even for people that sign up to your stuff usually like five ten percent so how do you get that higher because the more people that click on your emails will be able to be able to see what's inside of them and be connected to you what you're doing maybe a new book you have a podcast you have a new blog post whatever it is. And emails, like we talked about before, are the best way to market to people. It's direct. It's people that want to hear your content that lands in their inbox. Now the trick is to just get them to open it. And that's what copywriting does. It gets you to know how to write things down in a way that is, uh, and there's some cool tools. I'll, I'll tell you, you can just write in a couple words. They have a, a, a copywriting tool that you can just write in a couple words that you want to say. Uh, for me, like maybe discernment, God, 
and they'll give you uh, uh, they'll spit you out a couple options of what you might want to use in a, in a subject line so so get this get this book if you're planning on doing any of this um, it's not to help you write an entire blog but it is going to help you market that blog uh, with a small two sentence snippet on why people should read your blog so anyway check this out copywriting secrets get this book i, I recommend it okay this one's important so this is called the one funnel away challenge and this is through click funnels once again russell bronson uh, created click funnels which is a basically a website that is customizable you can create your own click funnel aka your own website uh, rather easily and inexpensively uh, and it's doing it in a way that makes people want to click on it so you're providing an offer now the best way to explain a click funnel is you've probably experienced this hey grab this free five-day course on whatever I did this with the free 14-day uh, devotional called Eyes on Jesus. And you can go to Eyes on Jesus devotional and see this played out. Uh, and also, hint, uh, Ministry Funnels is also one of ClickFunnels, so in case you didn't know. But it can go, hey, get this free devotional. Just enter your email. The devotional is emailed to you. And then two things happen. First of all, I have your email. Haha. -ha. Now I can create a list. I have a I can grow my email list which is invaluable in and of itself like we talked about before the value of emails and you can send people uh, weekly monthly hopefully not daily you're gonna be annoying uh, updates to these people who signed up for your stuff people can unsubscribe from it too so you want to make sure that you're providing value and not just uh, spamming them either but uh, once you have an email list you can start to grow that and get direct marketing to people uh, which unlike social media things like that it's highly unlikely that people will see your content on social media so that's one of the things that happens with the click funnel the second thing is that when you get the free thing you then go to the next page which says oh you got your free thing but don't you want an even better thing that you have to now pay for now for my case it was a 14-day free devotional and then I had a free or then I had a paid 30-day devotional along with every blog I ever wrote which uh, I, I created on designer, which I talked about in a previous day. Make sure you get designer. And then uh, I also included a bunch of other things with that. Links to exclusive content, my, uh, my free exclusive podcast, things like that. So I created that in one low price where people can get their free content. And then if they want to, now they can click no. They can pay whatever you want, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 100 bucks and get your stuff that you want to provide them. And you want to make sure that's ex an exclusive offer to them, something that is an immense value. You don't want to just say, here's my $15 book that you can get online for $15. You want to say, limited time only, my book is five bucks. And then it might be digital form, which is free for you to give that out. You don't have to pay any cost for giving them a PDF version of your book. Hello, $5 a book sounds really good at that point. So that's what a funnel is. There's a, there's lots of other things. You can have a one-time only offer. You can have an, another pop-up that comes up to be even more annoying to people. But the, the point of the funnels is really important because it allows you to create content that people want and you can give it away for free. You can either grow your email list or you can also provide exclusive content that people will want to pay for because of the value that you're bringing them. Now, you can just do the, the free option and the, and the email only. But what, what the One Funnel Away Challenge will do is it help you create something, a value proposition, which you can give to people and that people will want to buy. And your first thing might be like, I have nothing to offer. I think you're wrong. I think if you're interested in starting a ministry, God has placed something on your heart. I think you have something that people will want to read or want to buy. Now, what One Funnel Away Challenge will do is lead you through a 30-day program to help you find what that is. Now, this is not a Christian program, but this is something that you can use for your ministry to create something that might be the only website you have. Maybe you don't want to start a different website. Maybe you just want to have a link tree, which has all your links in it, and maybe a click funnel itself. Now, I will tell you that this is a an intense 30-day challenge. I went through this, and uh, they give you a lot of resources. They give you some awesome one-on-one -on -one support uh, we're actually going to next slide we're going to talk about some of the stuff they give you 
But coming out of the 30 days, I was pretty well equipped to start my own funnel, to start my own product. And it took me uh, months after to create a five day program like this, uh, which I did off of the ClickFunnels program, which I probably would have never done or offered it uh, without this, this program. So uh, I highly recommend this. Let's talk about the, the benefits of this program. So in 30 days, you have 30 days of video coaching, um, specific missions from Russell Bronson and some of his other uh, partners. Uh, you have 30 days of live coaching with the coaches inside a Facebook page. You get a one page digital workbook. Um, you also get a journal where you can write down through every day. There's actually homework, kind of like I've given you homework, but not, but more intense than my homework. My homework's been pretty minimal <laughs> from what I could give you. Uh, and so this, this homework's a little more intense, write down specific things. Um, there's uh, tra private trainings, there's a 30 day ebook, there's interviews you can look at, behind the scenes funnels, blah, blah, blah. So a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff you may not use, but the core of it is 30 days of video coaching and live coaching. Now I will tell you that this is $100 to do, which honestly is not a lot. Now it's debatable whether it's really $3,126. They kind of throw that in there is, is like, oh yeah, look at all this value, but honestly no one would ever pay that for this. But that's one of the tricks of the trades is to, to say you, you there's more value in what you're offering than people would actually pay. But I will tell you it is a lot, it is worth the $100 and then some. Especially if you get the uh, if you get the physical version, which I recommend and I have, if you get the physical version, uh, you get an awesome kit. Uh, which I'm going to show you here in just a second. All right, so just so you know that I'm not uh, just selling you stuff I haven't done myself. So this is the Expert Secrets book, which I recommended to you. And then this is the kit that you get, the One Funnel Away Challenge kit. And inside it is some awesome things, including just a ginormous book, another ginormous book on you suddenly lose everything in 30 days, what do you do? It's kind of a cool concept along with the journal that you can use for the program and so forth and so on so i definitely want to encourage you to take the one funnel away challenge it is something that you're going to have to make sure you have 30 days to kind of commit to this um, i would say half an hour to an hour a day is enough and you could do honestly two three hours a day if you wanted to uh, but i think with the core content uh half an hour a day is enough uh, but why not do this? Why not see what other people are doing? Get involved in this, uh, and I think it's going to be beneficial to you. Now, I will tell you this $100 is uh, something that uh, if, if you click on the link below, 100% of that $100 comes to me, which I think is cool. Uh, and it's cool because when you sign up to do this, you then will get a link where you can sign up your friends, and if they sign up through your link, you get $100 for them too. So... The ClickFunnel program is not interested in your $100. They just want to make sure that it's a, a small investment where you feel like I want to do this. I'm not just going to sign up and, and not pay attention. Um, but if anything, sign up. That 100 bucks comes to me. That might be like a thank you for what I provided for you. Uh, but anyway, no pressure if you don't. But I think this is such a good value that you're going to want to go through, that, through this. And I'm going to probably sign up for this again. Uh, because uh, I, I, there, it went so fast the first time that I wasn't really able to digest everything. And the training goes away after maybe a week after the program's over. Uh, and they keep doing it every 30, 40 days. I don't, I don't know how often, but pretty, pretty frequently you can sign up again uh, and go through it. So anyway, check the link. Um, consider signing up for it. That's honestly, I was trying to be open and honest with you about this, about where the $100 goes. I don't want this to be like a secret, uh, but this is something that I think will be uh, uh, valuable to you uh, and your ministry. Uh, there's also a link below for 14-day free trial for ClickFunnels, uh, which is another affiliate link. So check that out. If you have not played around with ClickFunnels before, you can, for a 14-day free trial, do so. Uh, now, I will tell you that this is something that uh, you will want to do with your uh, One Funnel Away Challenge. And what I recommend is don't do it immediately. Wait till about 15 days is left in the 30-day challenge and then sign up for the free trial because a lot of the first week or two is just general overview, general you know foundation for what you want to create. Uh, and so really utilize the 14 days fully by the last 14, 15 days of the program. 
Now you can play around with ClickFunnels, but you want to go through the training. Uh, there's a lot of support on here too. You can create your own email list, which is what's great about this. Um, people that come to your, your site can, uh, can sign up and be a customer for, for what you're offering. Uh, it might be something that you just want to provide free for people too. Now at the time of this recording, uh, a ClickFunnels membership monthly is about $97. Um, so that might be something that you want to see is, is there a benefit to it, uh, which I think there is. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a subscriber because I'm doing stuff with it. If you're just going to sit on it, then there's nothing much to it. But at least after the 30 day program, you can see, is this for me and what I want to do? Uh, and, and they will really help you. So don't worry about, I don't have any content today. That's fine. Go through the program. They will help you kind of brainstorm what you have to provide. And uh, I would love to hear the stories too of the, the funnels you've created uh, and the success you've had with, with the 30 day funnel, uh, the one funnel away challenge. Uh, so click funnels, uh, check it out. Like I said, uh, a no cost trial is a great way to just kind of get involved and see if it's for you. All right, moving on to Doug Bowden. Doug is a mentor of mine, someone I've partnered with for uh, creating content online. And uh, he is a click funnel uh, car winner. So he won the dream car award, which I can't really tell you what you have to do for that. You have to sell so much on click funnels to get the, the dream car. That's him on stage with Russell Brunson and some other guy. I don't know who it is, <laughs> but, um, he is a great partner for, uh, creating online content, getting people to your stuff. It's kind of the next step after you've been, uh, after you've gone through the, the one funnel away challenge, I would say start to do this with him. Uh, I, I signed up for his year mentorship, um, which is not cheap, but also something that I found value in, something that I'm able to see his strategies. And it's one of those things like don't reinvent the wheel, just see what other people are doing and apply that to what you're doing. And he does a great job with just getting people interested in what you're doing. Uh, nobody likes just getting DM'd on Facebook. Nobody likes uh, posts where all the, every single post is about, hey, check this out, check this out. But he really tells you how to make your, your page, your Facebook page, your website attractive so that people will want to come to your stuff without you begging them. Don't we all want that? You know, uh, it's not that you can't put stuff out there, but it's also the, the, the strategy involved in just a Facebook page alone is insane stuff. I never would have thought about that actually makes a lot of sense when you start thinking about it. So there's three things I want to point you to that Doug has to offer. And the first one is a five day challenge. He will help you create a, a, a free online course that will attract and nurture and lead customers into, into on autopilot. So a lot of this, once you set this up, you're not having to muscle it every day. You can kind of rely on it being a reoccurring thing. Uh, so this is a five day challenge. I would recommend you start with this. This is a great challenge to kind of see what it's about. Did I say it's free? This is a free five day challenge. So why not sign up and see what this is about? And if you want to go further with it, that's totally up to you. Uh, he also provides coaching. Now you can sign up for the paid coaching, which I did, or you can sign up for the free coaching, which is access to the live calls he does every week. So you get to jump into the Zoom, see what him and, and everyone's talking about. I'm on them too once in a while and really get to be able to uh, ask questions. You get to be able to say like, you know, I'm working on this. Do you have any feedback? Hearing, hearing what other people are doing uh, is very beneficial because you're able to see what's working for them, hear the pain of, you know, things that failed. Uh, there's really a, a, a having a community that is involved in these types of things is very important. So you have the free coaching and then you have uh, another five day challenge called offers that sell. Uh, this is about creating an offer that attracts clients uh, and automate your marketing so you can do what you enjoy every day. Uh, this is this is more if you already have a, a set offer that you've that you've nurtured and grown. Uh, maybe you're doing uh, coaching. Maybe you have a, um, a a program that people can sign up for 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 mentorship. Uh, maybe you have a mastermind class. Uh, maybe you're doing uh, some of that kind of stuff and you want to create an offer that people will be attracted to. So there's three things. I would say that you do at least one of them. Check out what Doug has to offer and I think you'll find a lot of value with it. All right, so for day five, these are things that 
uh, would like you to do or think about. So first of all, is decide what your profit strategy will be. This is not an exclusive list of things that will uh, get you profit or get you money for your ministry, but this is a good starting point. So write down the things from today that you will want to start doing or at least looking into. All right, I think you should order one or all of the Expert Secrets books. I highly recommend them. There's links below. And I think you should take the One Funnel Away Challenge. I honestly do. I've talked about that, but I think it will be very beneficial to you. And there's a lot of value given to you in the challenge. Take one of Doug's free trainings or all of them. And then share your thoughts in the Facebook group about day five. So I'd love to hear from you. Things that you're already doing that you want to share. Things that you want to improve upon uh, to help grow your ministry and get support from people who like what you're doing and want to support you. That's the main thing. All right, so what's next for, for Ministry Funnels? This is uh, the end of this training, but uh, a couple of things. So refer back to this training as often as you want. So you're going to start to think about things. If you're brand new especially, this is a lot for you to take in. So you might just do one or two things out of this training, and that's fine. But as you start to do new things, as you start to say, hey, I want to start a Patreon, I want to start a podcast, you can refer back to this training and then start to just focus in on that one particular thing that you want to work on. So refer back to this training since a lot of it was intense and very quick. This was also a high level overview. So use the Facebook group to ask questions and make connections. Now keep in mind the Facebook group has some disclaimers, some rules. This is not going to be a group where we discuss theology, where we spam our, our own stuff. This is going to be about connections. This is going to be about specific ministry funnel topics on how to grow your ministry online. So let's use the group for that. Let's have great discussions and make connections. There might be people that can write an online blog for you. Uh, there might be people that can uh, be a guest on your podcast. There might be people that you can do uh, dual lives with on, on Instagram, right? There's a lot of cool things. And I hope to hear some of those, those stories of the connections that were made in the group. Uh, share your expertise in the group to further expand on these concepts. I am not the expert on all of these topics. What I've done is I've, I've, brought everything together. I've done a lot of research on this stuff. I've tried to go through most of this myself. Okay, I'm not trying to recommend things to you that I have not personally done. Okay, I've, I've kind of made that a rule, uh, or at least that I've heard other people use uh, that have had success. But what I've tried to do is give you things that I think will help. Now, granted, I'm not the expert in doing all this stuff. So that's where you come in. If you've blogged for five, 10 years, we want to hear from you. What has been successful for you in your blog? Let people know in the Facebook group. Give a little short, uh, you know, post about, you know, five key successes to blogging, right? And then people can comment on there and ask questions. This is a great way to learn and grow together. I'm not done learning. I'm not done growing, believe me. And then send me your testimonials and feedback on this program to my email, and I might feature them on an upcoming promotion. So I would love to hear from you. It may not be an immediate feedback, but it may be months down the road. You have success in your ministry. You started it from nothing, uh, and then you really want to let me know kind of where you're at. Would love to hear from you. Would love to incorporate some of these testimonials on the main page when people sign up so that they can uh, know what they're getting into and hear people that have gone on before this. I would love it if you promote, if you share this with a friend, if you know somebody in ministry, if you know a pastor, if you know somebody who has a ministry or wants to start a ministry, send them this training, just ministryfunnels.net. We'll get them there. And I really hope that we can spread this to more people, that people can just grow. Because like I said at the beginning, if we grow together, the kingdom wins. We really do. The kingdom wins when we grow and spread the gospel. So there's no like, I have to grow at the expense of you. No, we need to grow together, be looking out for each other in ministry because the world wants to tear us down, right? Uh, and finally, I want to grow ministry funnels even more than this training. So there might be future trainings, maybe a one-off training, uh, maybe a Facebook Live uh, that I can give, you know, maybe 30 minutes about Instagram, for example. Instagram was a very small thing in this training. But I could talk for 30 minutes just on Instagram, believe me, or TikTok. So I could do specific live trainings in the Facebook uh, group, but it's really going to be dependent on the response to this and if you want to see that. Um, I would even love to start a podcast called Ministry Funnels. 
have experts on that have grown a ministry uh, talk about specific things just on one episode. We could talk about websites on one episode. We could talk about, uh, you know, podcasting on one episode, all that kind of stuff. So let's see where we go from here. Thank you so much for coming uh, along board this journey with me, uh, understanding my heart to help you. And then I'm still here for you after this training is over. Just reach out. God bless you.